Hey, what's going on? It's Justin Dickmeyer from engineerandtrainingexam.com. And in this video, we will discuss modified accelerated cost recovery system depreciation. In this video, we will define the topic of modified accelerated cost recovery system depreciation, also known as MACRS walk through the general workflow of solving such problems, and jump into working an example of something we may see on the exam. The topic of modified accelerated cost recovery system depreciation falls under the main category of engineering economics. Equations, symbols, tables, and information on the various topics covered in engineering economics can be referenced on pages 114 through 120 of the NCEES Supplied Reference Handbook, 8th edition, 2nd revision. Modified Accelerated Cost Recovery System Depreciation is a combination of the straight line and double declining depreciation methods. This method can be a little bit more involved having various tables in the real world to determine the recovery periods or equipment life allowed for several different classes of equipment. Fortunately, on this exam we shouldn't have to jump into these tables as the recovery periods will more than likely be included in the problem statement. With the recovery period defined, we will use the MACRS table of factors that is included in the NCEES reference manual to define the factor used to compute the depreciation. So let's walk through the general workflow. The goal of a modified accelerated cost recovery system depreciation problem is to determine the depreciation of an asset at a specific point during its lifespan. To determine the depreciation charge for any year within the useful lifespan, we can refer to the formula found on page 115 of the NCEES Supplied Reference Handbook, 8th edition, 2nd revision, for the accelerated cost recovery system, which states that D sub J is equal to some factor times C, where D sub J is the depreciation in year J and C is the cost of the piece of equipment. Knowing the useful lifespan, the factor we use in this calculation can be found by referencing the modified ACRS table found on page 115 of the NCEES Supplied Reference Handbook, 8th edition, 2nd revision. So let's run through an example. Assuming modified ACRS, for a certain capital investment of $750,000 made for a specialized equipment with a useful life of seven years, what is the depreciation write-off in year five? So here's the solution. The goal is to determine what the depreciation write-off will be in year five after making this specified capital investment. Recall that depreciation is the systematic allocation of the cost of a capital cost over its useful lifespan. To determine the depreciation charge for any year within the useful lifespan, we can refer to the formula found on page 115 of the NCEES Supplied Reference Handbook for the Accelerated Cost Recovery System, which states that D sub j is equal to some factor times c, where d sub j is the depreciation in year j, and c is the cost of the piece of equipment. Now remember, the factor can be found by noting the useful lifespan and referencing the modified ACRS table found on page 115 of the NCEES Supplied Reference Handbook. In this problem, we are given a cost, C, of $750,000. We're given a lifespan of seven years. And we're given the year that we want to find the depreciation charge as year five. 
The useful lifespan is seven years, so referencing the modified ACRS table found on page 115 of the NCEES Supplied Reference Handbook, we find that the factor is equal to 8.9%. It is important to note that these factors are given as percentages and must be converted to decimal when determining the depreciation. So plugging these values into the equation, we find that D sub 5 is equal to 0 0.089 times $750,000, which equals $66,750. So the depreciation write-off in year 5 is $66,750. There are a few ways that we can mess up on a problem like this. The most common is just failing to recognize what the problem is asking for. In this case, we are asked to determine the depreciation in a single year during the lifespan of the asset. It would be easy to determine the cumulative depreciation up to this year, or the book value at this point, or some other simple mistake. Another mistake that is common is referencing the incorrect column when using the modified ACRS tables. The columns are defined by the lifespan of the asset you are analyzing. In this case, we were analyzing an asset with a seven-year recovery period. If we were to reference any other column other than the seven-year column, we would significantly throw off our analysis. Well, that's it for this video. Do you know anybody that would benefit from this lesson? If so, let's try to reach out and help others by sharing this video with them. Also, take a second to like this video and leave a comment and tell me how it will help you move forward in your goal of becoming a professional engineer. And finally, type in engineerintrainingexam.com into your URL bar and visit the site to download for free the transcript to this video along with the example problem and solution we worked. While you are there, you can also sign up for the free EIT Academy Bootcamp, 137 pages and over 50 practice problems and solutions to get you on track to passing this exam.